Hello again. Welcome to another episode of Coffee Shop, my second series on this channel, where I give my thoughts on something in a certain amount of time. And if you saw the thumbnail, which uh, I presume most of you did, the topic for this episode is Five Nights at Freddy's. No, 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 not the series, the very first game that came out all the way back in 2014. Yeah, 2014. Wow, I was only like eight years old at that point. Now, this is the weird thing. I kind of, kind of didn't grow up with FNAF. Like, I would actually watch some FNAF-related content. Like, of course, watching some people play the game, listening to some of the fan-made songs, watching FNAF the musical, figuring out if a poorly photoshopped FNAF restaurant is real or not. Spoiler alert, it's not. Laughing at FNAF's not scary. And hell, even watching the theory of if Foxy is a good guy or not. But the main way I really got into FNAF, well, when I was younger at least, was through the Game Theory episodes. You know, Matt Pat. I JUST SIMULTANEOUSLY WHIPPED AND NAINAID! Yeah, the legend himself. But yeah, I watched all this FNAF content, but I never actually played the game before. Cause uh, I was actually kinda scared of this franchise. Yeah, now that I'm older, I can see that it's not as scary as I thought. With the only real thing that scared me as a kid was the jump scares. But now that I'm older and, you know, less scared of this franchise, I actually got to play it for once. And you want to know what? It's pretty good. Now, I think everyone here watching this video knows how FNAF plays. But let's quickly go over it to, you know, appreciate what makes FNAF really good. You're a security guard forced to monitor Freddy Fazbear's Pizza at night. But you quickly find out that the animatronics are hostile, which your only means of defense is with the door on the left and the door on the right. But those doors also use power and you have a limited supply of energy. So you should only use them when an animatronic is near. But also in your office you have access to cameras that can be used to find out where the animatronics are and whether or not you should close the door or not to conserve your power. What the goal of the game is being able to survive until 6 a.m. And all of this is actually a pretty interesting concept for a horror game. Having to defend yourself from evil beings while being stuck in one location. Yeah, when you look back at what FNAF is, it's actually a really cool concept. I don't know if it's been done before, maybe it has, but I think this is the game that really did popularize that. Now, yes, the gameplay is simple, and hell, it doesn't really seem that exciting at first, but I really like the gameplay of managing your power. I mean, like, for real, this shit runs out really fast, if you're not careful, which encourages you to leave the doors open. But if you do, you might leave yourself open to an animatronic attack. So you kind of have to ask the question if, if it's worth it or not to leave a door or close or open, which really does make you more anxious and stressed out, which makes you more fearful of the animatronics and does service to further heightening the horror. Like for me, the more horrifying thing isn't the animatronics that much, but more just like conserving the power. That shit is stressful. Now, another important thing about FNAF, well, is the actual animatronics themselves. We all know them, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy. Oh yeah, and there's also Golden Freddy. We don't talk about him. But you know, in all seriousness, I love these guys, honestly. All of them really nailed that Chuck E. Cheese 80-ish vibe, and I kind of like how real it looks. Now, I know Bonnie and Foxy were probably like the most popular characters in the fandom, but honestly, my favorite was Chica. It's like, you know, I don't know. I just found her design funny sometimes. Like, come on, look at this face. That's funny. Guys, look! A birdie! <gasps> it's pretty! Let's catch it! You know, with these designs, I'm not really surprised that FNAF was able to take off so much. They're simple, yes, but they work. So yeah, good characters, good gameplay. What's another thing that I want to praise about this game? Well, I guess another thing that I want to praise is, well, the sound design of this game. Like the ambience that the game uses throughout your whole playthrough is... I mean, I can't put it into word. Obviously, you know, it's unnerving, but it's so unusual as well. Take a listen. Yeah, admittedly, that's kind of creepy. And you know, there's other sound effects I really appreciate that the, that the creator Scott Coffin put in the game. Like the little footsteps that you hear when the animatronic is getting closer or is walking away.
and also that creepy ass Freddy laugh. <laughs> You know, it's not like amazing Hollywood level sound design, but honestly for a horror game that costs like, what, $5? It's not that bad. Now the next thing I want to talk about is not necessarily related to the sound design, but I like how on rare occasion the game might mess with what you believe is real, with it occasionally switching out posters for something new. Although I do have a small complaint, I do wish it happened a little more often, you know, to really heighten the horror of the game and increase the anxiety of the player while playing it. You know, I have been praising this game a lot, honestly. But to be real, I wouldn't call it perfect at all. Dare I say, it's not a very scary game to play? I beg your pardon? I beg your pardon? Okay, look, don't hate me for it. Let me elaborate a bit. Now, it's not like I'm completely not scared when I'm playing this game. I still am. But, like, for me, it just doesn't stick. After I play the game, you know, I'm not sitting awake at night thinking about it. Like, the main horror is the jump scares, which aren't really that scary. You know, it just, they don't have any impact, honestly. You know, all of it kind of feels artificial. And some other people have taken the concept of FNAF and actually truly make it scary. Like the FNAF VHSs on YouTube. Although, to be fair, there is one thing in the original FNAF that does really stick with me. And that is the death of phone guy on night four. This is legit probably the more horrifying thing in the first FNAF because we've grown to actually know Phone Guy and he's kind of contemplating his own death which is so sad too. This sort of thing sticks with me more than the jump scares honestly. But look, whether or not this game is actually scary, I don't think that really takes away my enjoyment of FNAF. Honestly, I kind of do enjoy the lore even if it's uh, very complicated nowadays. It's still what brings me back to this franchise. So look, overall, I think the first game is a solid 7 out of 10. Maybe you disagree or agree with me. I don't know. Anyways, thank you so much for watching my video. And uh, I'm gonna leave you with this final jump scare. Catch me right dirty. <laughs>